After the bad weather of last Sunday, it's uh, nice to welcome uh, you back in the Lord's Sanctuary. Uh, if you were not able to get out last Sunday, uh, good to see you as we uh, gather around the Lord's Word and Sacrament uh, here this morning and uh, worship once again together. If you are a guest or visitor to Good Shepherd, we welcome you in Christ's name. It's nice to have you with us today. We encourage you to sign our guest book and uh, worship with us again in the near future. Our order of service for this morning is going to be the Divine Service Setting 3. That'll be page 184 in the front portion of your hymnal. Our opening hymn is 904. It's entitled, Blessed Jesus at Your Word, and we will be standing on the last verse. Christ, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro, which is printed in your worship folder this morning from Psalm 147, the congregational tune is As With Gladness Men of Old. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. It is pleasant and right to praise Him. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, but casts the wicked to the ground. He counts the number of the stars and calls each one by name. Great and mighty is our Lord. His wisdom cannot be measured. the earth and makes grass to grow on the hills. He gives animals their food and feeds the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in strong horses, nor his delight in brave soldiers. in those who fear him, in those who trust his constant love. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion.
Let us pray. O God of compassion, you sent your Son Jesus to move among your people with healing for every hurt of life. Send him among us with that same power to heal our sinful lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany comes from Isaiah chapter 40 and can be found on the back of your worship folder. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. By the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle readings on the back of your worship folder as well. From 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 16 to 27. We're going to read those verses together and then following the reading we'll rise and sing the triple hallelujah on page 190. Let us then read. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Mark, the 
first chapter. Mark 1, 29 to 39 will be our sermon text for this morning. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or were oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith in this morning's service will be the Nicene Creed on 191, and we will confess it together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, life, light. Very God, very God, be God not made, be no one substance with the Father. I whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as the base of our message for this morning, our gospel lesson from St. Mark 1, 29-39. Dear friends in Christ, professions and vocations serve a function. Every father, mother, student, teacher, police officer, attorney, and politician has a purpose. Basketball players and musicians, plumbers and farmers, motivational speakers and financial advisors have a function. Their vocation may be to raise their children, teach, motivate, or fix a leaky faucet. Every person has a vocation or a function, and most have several vocations in addition to their job activities. Well, what about God, His only beloved Son, Jesus Christ? Why did Jesus go from one town to another and place to place? What is Christ's function? Now, where did Jesus' preaching fit into His total ministry? In our text, we find Jesus. He's been at the synagogue in Capernaum, and now He enters the house of Peter and Andrew with James and John. Peter's mother-in-law has a fever. She's ill. Jesus lifts her up. The fever leaves her, and she begins to serve all of them. Jesus, now at sundown, after the Sabbath ends, he receives the crowds who continually bring those afflicted by sickness or demons. He heals many and casts out the demons. Jesus, early in the morning, he leaves the disciples to pray in solitude. He needs a break, like we all do. But the disciples hunt him down because the disciples say that everyone's looking for him. He then proclaims his function. They are going to go to the neighboring towns where Jesus can proclaim the kingdom of God. That is why he came. And he continues this ministry as he goes throughout the region of Galilee preaching and expelling demons by his word. What does Christ preaching in the Word mean for us? Many times we see or hear things while something else is going on and we miss it. It's like trying to watch a three-ring circus. The trapeze artists get our whole attention. We may miss the clowns or the tigers. There's so much going on. When I announce football games, which I have done now for a number of years, I watch the game through my binoculars so I can get the number of the ball carrier and the tackler correct. Parents want that name's kid said right, believe me. And anyway, when I do that, my field of vision is limited. I might miss something down the field. To fully appreciate a circus or football game, we must see the event in its entirety. The same is true of understanding the ministry of Jesus. You see, during those early Galilean years, he taught, he preached, he worked miracles. Everyone wanted a piece of him, but they didn't really know why he'd come. He'd come to preach, but what he was preaching himself wasn't understood by many until the climax of that preaching was fulfilled, his death and resurrection. Jesus' healing today in our text validates his preaching. He heals our minds, our bodies, our souls. He heals our greatest illnesses, rejection of his will, unbelief, sin, and death. It has the same impact on our world today as it did when Jesus himself spoke. And like Peter's mother-in-law, you and I have been healed to serve out our faith and our love. We are here right now in this place to fulfill our vocation for Christ and His church. And like the disciples, we are invited by the Holy Spirit to find Jesus at Bible studies, in Sunday school, in devotions, in Holy Communion, in confession and absolution. And like the crowds, 
we may always bring others to be spiritually enriched by his touch and his preaching and worship and Bible studies and baptism and Holy Communion. But how does that preaching continue today? What is our function? You know, when I hear the word function, this is, might take a few of you back. It takes me back to my childhood and Saturday mornings when they had these little vignettes on television. And I remember this little ditty. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I want you to think of it this way. Christian, Christian, what's your function? The Holy Spirit empowers us to be about the mission of the church. You and I can't heal, but we can invite others to the healing waters. We can't preach like Jesus, but we can reach out to others to come and hear the Lord's preaching. And we do have the ability to forgive the sins of repentant sinners because Christ first forgave us. And as the word is preached and the sacraments are administered, Jesus continues to heal the sick of soul. The Lord has his function, and through him we have ours. Let's get to it. Amen. Rejoicing in their Savior who visits them with his very body and blood to work the miracle of forgiveness among them. And in this year of our 20th anniversary, as we have asked for different prayer requests, we thank you, Lord, this day for all walks of life who come together at Good Shepherd Luther so that we might worship you, the Lord, our Savior. We thank you for the many blessings as you bring people together in this place as you have done in the past, you do today, and you will continue into the future. Continue to bless all who come, that they might be fed by your word and sacrament, and then go out and serve you. Continue to watch over us, guide and bless us during the week ahead, till we meet again in your house, 
Through Christ our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Worship continues now with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
not even the true love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, faith and preserving the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Good morning. Don't oh, you love it when the Lord does the shoveling with the sunshine? I do. Uh, just one announcement that I have before I turn it over to Nathan. Uh, this week on Tuesday, I am uh, hosting, or Good Shepherd's hosting, but I'm doing the hosting, for the Bloomington North Circuit Pastors Conference. So we'll be in here in the morning. We do have a worship service for a little while. That will be over in the conference room. Uh, so just be aware of that if you uh, stop by around on Tuesday. So I'll be busy on Tuesday morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, one announcement to call out is that this is the second Sunday, so we do have a basket for offerings for our seminary students. Um, we've got Michael Carney that we're still supporting and Christopher Suggett, uh, so if you'd like to make an offering for that, the basket's in the back and in our next. Um, Christopher Suggett will be coming to preach here at the church sometime in March. We'll get the details hammered out and uh, find and uh, let everybody know about that, but, uh, so that we can uh, hear from somebody that we're supporting at the seminary. Uh, other than that, uh, just look at the announcements uh, and the schedule in the yellow section of your bulletin. Does anyone else have any announcements? Have a blessed week serving the Lord.